Welcome to tonight's webinar, Studying and Learning from the Eyewitnesses of Christ's Birth. The purpose of a webinar is first to provide training for Logos Bible software. Second, we're going to provide training so that you can study this particular topic for yourself. Thirdly, along the way, we're going to provide biblical insights related to the topic. And fourth, we're going to provide materials so that you can equip yourself and others. For example, with the purchase of this webinar, you'll be provided with a personal book which includes all my notes, all my links, and all my searches, collections, etc. to help you study along with this training video. And as you can see here, this is quite an extensive outline that we have for tonight's presentation. Now before we get started, just a quick overview. You can purchase the webinar for $4.99, that's 50% off our retail price of $9.99. We also have available training DVDs. We have it for Logos 4 and for Logos 5. You can see these are very comprehensive. There's really three parts to the training videos. The first part is the orange DVD, or part one, where we overview every single feature of the Logos program. Part two introduces you to many books and resources in your library as well as in the Logos store that are organized around your Bible study. So the best books on prayer, the best books for word studies. This will help you understand the books in your library and guide you for book purchases. And then the third part is to help you apply the Logos technology for the purpose of studying the Bible and preparing a message. All this is available in one training package. So again, 300 videos for Logos 4, about 17 hours of training. Logos 5 has about 500 videos, 21 hours. And you can get that for 50% off. Just go ahead and visit learnlogos.com forward slash buy now. Don't forget to check out the live training schedule and sign up for future training events at learnlogos.com forward slash events. Be sure to sign up for our webinar on Monday, January 6th on the Logos mobile app for iPhone, iPad, and Droid. We also have a significant training event at learnlogos.com forward slash sermon. It's 10 sessions, roughly two hours per session. We're going to train you how to study and prepare a sermon with Logos 5. So we're very excited to bring that to you in the next couple weeks. So what are tonight's training topics? Well, first we're in the introduction. We're going to take a brief look at re recommended but not required resources. We're going to show you how to organize your notes to identify the witnesses of Christ's birth. We're going to help you find key passages referencing witnesses to the birth of Christ. We'll show you how to discover what the witness informs us about Christ's birth. We'll show you how to defend against arguments that would deny Christ's birth. We'll show you how to do some image searching, some hymn searching, how to research passages for a deeper study. We'll talk about meditation and why Christ's birth is so amazing. We'll take a look at a couple other related topics for deeper and further study. And also show you how to prepare a devotional to share for any Christmas gathering, as I'm sure many of you will be doing this Christmas. So let's get started and jump into our personal book. And let's start off with recommended but not required resources. Now, the first thing I want to do is just help you find books in your library on this topic before you go to the Logos store. So I've got a search here. It's a little bit complicated, but when you see it broken down, it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to go to search, then we're going to go to basic search, and we're going to search our entire library. So let's break down the search. We have large text colon in quotes, birth of Christ. Whenever you have a phrase, you need to put it in quotes. Now, the large text will search the headings or paragraph titles within the article. In other words, when we find an article with large text, usually what follows is information about that title. So by searching on the large text, we're searching articles rather than the passing text that's in the article. So as you can see in the search results below, we see, for example, Birth of Christ. And if we click on that link, we can see that this is an article referring to the Birth of Christ. Another part of the search phrase is large text Christ's birth. So it's just another way of saying the same thing. And then the third part is large text virgin birth. Each one of these is unique and is important to search on in order for you to get the best search results possible. And as you can see, there's quite a few different ways that articles discuss the birth of Christ. So each of these searches are important to have to maximize your search results. And this way, you can see what books already exist in your library that discuss this topic. Now, another search you can run, very straightforward, is just simply search basic search large text virgin birth. So let me put that into the search results. Here we go. 
large text version birth. So this way you can focus on just that particular topic. So whether you search for all of them or just one of the phrases, it's really up to you how you want to approach this. Now let's talk about some resources that have been written. Mary, they'll take us to Bible facts. And guess what? We have everything we need to know about Mary right here from the various passages that mentions her to the dictionary to learn more, to her various relatives and relationships, and to other things like how she's referred to as. So leveraging the passage guide on a birth narrative can be very strategic. But also don't forget that Logos has this really cool search engine called the Clause Search. This is really helpful. So let's break it down. The first thing we need to do is choose all passages. Clause Search has two types of searches, a Greek New Testament search and an Old Testament search. You can't search old and new at the same time. You have to do one or the other. So let's search the Greek New Testament. Now I put in person colon magi. Notice there's no spaces between person colon and magi. Let's run the search. The reason the clause search is so important is because not only can it find where the magi are literally mentioned, but it can also find places where they're talking or they're referred to as through a personal pronoun. For example, here we have Matthew 2.1. The Magi, they're specifically mentioned, from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, now we go to verse 2, and here they are speaking. If we go down further, we can find out that here in verse 9, after hearing the king, they went their own way. So though the Magi aren't literally specified in the text, it is about them. So with the clause search, we truly can find every passage where the Magi are referenced. Now, let's say you're not using the clause search. You're just simply reading. Well, we could right-click on a personal pronoun. Here they are. They went their way. And sometimes Logos has it tagged under person. Now, in this particular one, it's not. So let's go after the king, they went their way and the star, which they had seen. And so if I right-click on the word they, here it is, person. So that makes it real easy for us to find out who is being referenced with the personal pronoun. So take advantage of that search and that capability in Logos Bible software. Now, in regards to the Magi, there are a lot of myths and traditions surrounding the Magi. We have all seen so many stories with just three of them. There's a great article in Israel My Glory by Dr. Varner that does a wonderful job of explaining why some of these myths are, or I should say it this way, why some of these myths should remain myths. <laughs> For example, there were three in number, they were kings, they were from the Orient. Their names were Casper, Melikoy, and Belshazzar. Uh, one of them was a black man. They visited baby Jesus in a stable. They were astrologers who followed an astronomical comet or nova to Bethlehem. And so Dr. Varner is going to deal with each one of those in a biblical way. This is going to be eye-opening if you have been one of those who believed some of these cultural myths that have been passed down from generation to generation. What about that star that stood in Matthew 2.9? So here's a search you can run. Less than sign, Bible space equal, Matthew 2 colon 9 within 10 word star. Now, when you do a search like this, you want to search your entire library using the basic search engine. This will be very important because now you're searching your whole library for anybody who deals with this particular topic. So this will be very helpful, especially in the commentaries and other specialized resources, which will tackle this difficult topic. What was this object in the sky? because clearly it moved and it was over the house of where the baby was. So that clearly can't be some supernova or some comet. That just wouldn't make sense. So this helps us determine what we can know and work our way from there. Another question that comes up is when was Christ really born? Here's a specialized search you wanna run. Search against the entire library and it's titled Dating the Birth of Christ. Now I did not put these in quotes because the words sometimes change the order and you'll get reduced search results. So, but you will be able to find some quick answers and how people have calculated the birth of Christ. And at best you'll get a good range, but nevertheless, a still a very important issue when dealing with this topic. By the way, there's a good book here by Johnston and Cheney titled Jesus Christ, The Greatest Life, A Unique Blending of the Four Gospels. Let me go ahead and open up this. And it's got this great chart Jesus's early years of preparation. So there's some wonderful helps in this resource as well. And again, that's Jesus Christ, the greatest life by Ellenson and Cheney. So be aware of that. Another question is, where was Christ born? Now, John Butler in his book, Jesus Christ's Incarnation, Volume 1, actually discusses this. 
and uh, where is the place of delivery? So recognize that each of these resources are bringing out different nuances, going into more or less detail on some of these important subjects. If you want to search your library for this topic, just run this simple search. Search, basic search, entire library, birthplace of Christ, or Christ was born. And this will pretty much help you find all the key information you need on this particular topic. For letter E, I'm going to show you how to search your Bible, specifically the birth narrative passages, but using the Lo Nida numbering system. So let's go to search, let's go to Bible search, and let's continue to use our Jesus' birth narrative search range. Now you'll notice I have several types of searches. People, supernatural beings, animals, geographical, cosmological, and shepherds. Now I'm going to run the search for people. Okay, we've run the search on Lonida, squiggly line 9 through 11. Now if we were to open up our Lonida dictionary, let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to right click on Lonida 10 and choose Greek English lexicon. We'll discover that 9, 10, and 11 represent the categories of people, kinship terms, and groups and classes of people. The neat thing about what we've just done though is we've searched just our birth narratives and now we have a list of all the different people associated or mentioned in the birth narratives. So we can work through these one by one and glean as much information as we can. So the specialized searches here will allow you to focus on these individuals. So here we have supernatural beings. Well, where were they mentioned in the birth narratives? Here they are. Then we have animals. Well, where were they mentioned? Here we go. Flock and turtle doves and young pigeons. What about the cosmological or geographical? We can run that search and we can learn about the star and the country and the way and the hill and the deserts, etc. And even the shepherds. There's actually a specific search for that particular role. Using the Lonida search allows you to focus on a specific group of people and this way you can get all the results back which sometimes is very difficult to do in English or in the Greek because there may be a variety of Greek words used. And this way you can just do it with a simple search. So for example, if we were to search on people again and we were to click on analysis, analysis view will allow us to see the Greek words behind that. Now I'm gonna remove the Lonida and I'm gonna just simply drag right here the lemma. I'm gonna left click on lemma, drag it up here to the top and I'm going to right click on the first section and choose collapse all. You can see all the different Greek words and even if you can't read Greek one thing is clear that's a lot of Greek words to search on to find all the people in the Bible. So the low nine number simplifies our search by searching on just one or a series of numbers. So take advantage of that when searching the birth narratives. Now what are some important strategies to dig deeper? Well let's take Luke 2.8 for example. And let me move my Bible over here to the bottom. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. So let's say we wanted to go deeper into the shepherds. Who are they? Well we could right click on shepherds. We could choose person and let's say a shepherd and we can go to Bible facts. And right away we get this amazing picture. Your results may be a little bit different based on your library. And now we can use the Bible facts to work our way through what does the Bible teach about the shepherds. Plus we have some additional images down below. This is a great way to get comfortable very quickly regarding these topics. Another link that I have is Bible facts shepherds at the birth. Now even though there's no images we do see some cross references and some additional links to dictionaries and passages. Even though there may not be images there are articles and key cross-references to be explained and, and reviewed. Now, let's say we, we go further with shepherds, okay? So we did the right-click on the person, we did Bible facts. Another one we could do is we could right-click and we can choose sense. And in this case, let's choose sense and let's do shepherds. So we right-click on shepherds, we scroll down, and here's sense, here's shepherd, and we go to the Bible sense lexicon. Now what does this do for us? Well, first it tells us quite a bit of information that shepherd is part of a herder. And the herder can also be called a sheep breeder. And that herder is part of a day laborer. So this gives us kind of a better picture of how shepherd is related to other individuals, other concepts in the Bible. And so 
this is a working person. So be aware of how the Bible Sense lexicon works. Notice at the left, it gives you a link to the Hebrew word. So you might want to do some more studies there and some other Greek words as well. So for example...